Verifying trig identities is like proving theorems in geometry. We're going to use identities that we already know to be true to prove new identities. So since we're trying to verify this, we don't actually know that the left side is equal to the right side. But when we're done, hopefully we will prove that those two sides are equal to each other. All right. So let's work on the left side and see if we can make it look like the right side. Now you should recall that there's a Pythagorean identity that says that the tangent squared of theta plus one is equal to the secant squared of theta. So that means that the secant squared of theta minus one is tangent squared of theta. And secant squared is one over cosine and tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. So if I'm dividing by one over cosine, then when I flip and multiply, now I'm multiplying by cosine squared, and those cancel. So that's one way to do it. There's another way. We could go ahead and take this left side and split it up. We could write secant squared theta over secant squared theta minus one over secant squared theta, which gives us one minus cosine squared theta, and by the Pythagorean identity that says that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one, one minus cosine squared theta equals sine squared theta. But either way, no matter what we do, we're going to get that this left side eventually equals sine squared theta. And that's the basic process. So here's what you do. You work with one side of the equation at a time. You can never multiply, divide, add, or subtract across an equal sign because you don't know that they actually are equal until you prove it. You're going to use your fundamental trig identities like Pythagorean identities or your co-function identities or your reciprocal functions to simplify the more complicated side of an identity until it equals the other side. Okay, so let's just do some more examples. Here we're going to verify the identity that tangent squared x plus one times cosine squared x minus one is supposed to equal negative tangent squared x. So tangent squared x plus one is equal to secant squared x and cosine squared x minus one is equal to negative sine squared x because by the Pythagorean identity, remember up here, if I have sine squared plus cosine squared, equal, it equals one. So cosine squared x minus one is going to equal negative sine squared x. Okay, so secant squared is one over cosine squared. And negative sine squared over cosine squared is negative tangent squared and that's what we want to get. All right, let's look at this one. Uh, I don't see things squared, so I don't think we'll be able to use the Pythagorean identity. So when all else fails, go ahead and convert everything to sine and cosine. So tangent of x is sine x over cosine x, and cotangent of x is cosine x over sine x. So my common denominator will be cosine x times sine x. So I need to multiply the top and bottom of this first equation, first expression by cosine. No, I already have the cosine. I'm going to multiply it by sine. So I'm going to get sine squared x over cosine x sine x. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this by cosine. So it'll give me cosine squared x over cosine x sine x. Now I have the same denominator, so I can combine them. Well, look at that. Our old friend, the Pythagorean identity, is back, and we can replace all of this with one. And one over cosine is secant x, and one over sine is cosecant x which is what we wanted to get. Okay, now when I see a fraction with one minus a trig function, I think to myself, it might be a good idea 
to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. So let's see what happens when we do that. And you know, sometimes you get going on these things and you end up hitting a dead end and you just have to start all over again. And you may have noticed that there is more than one way to do these. So whichever way you do it, if it works, it's fine with me. Doesn't matter if it's exactly the same way as what I do. Okay, so right here I have cosine theta plus cosine theta sine theta all over 1 squared minus sine squared. So I have cosine theta plus cosine theta sine theta all over cosine squared theta. And I can split that up into two fractions. Cosine over cosine squared is 1 over cosine. And cosine sine over cosine squared is sine over cosine. And cosine 1 over cosine is secant. And sine over cosine is tangent, which is what we're trying to get. So that's done. All right, let's do one more. So right here, I've got cotangent squared x over 1 plus cosecant x equals 1 minus sine x over sine x. So I'm going to replace the cotangent squared with cosecant squared x minus 1 by the Pythagorean identity. because that is now the difference of two squares. And you'll notice now that I can cancel those things and I'm left with cosecant x minus one. Okay, so now let's shift our attention over to the other side and I can split that up into one over sine x minus sine x over sine x, which is equal to cosecant x minus 1. Hey, that's what I've got over here. So we've just proven an identity. Now notice, I worked on both sides in this example, but I did not do anything across equal sign. So you can work on both sides as long as you keep them strictly separate until they look like each other, and that's good enough to prove the identity.